Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of Halloween and the number zero, I'd like to introduce to you Smashing Pumpkins! <laughs> Alright, our no communicate mathematical ideas and do solve an equation using the zero product property. And this number zero, it's it's actually a pretty special number. Did you know that at one time in our existence we were pretty much a world with no zero? What I mean by that is there's the US, there's New Zealand, but five thousand years ago there was civilization of Babylonians between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers Whew. and this was their number system uh, if you look closely at it it just goes from 1 to 59 okay and uh, you might be asking yourself why does it stop at 59 well it doesn't actually just stop it actually repeats okay so that symbol right there not only means 1, but it also means 60. But it also means 3,600. It also means 1 over 60 and many other things. Every power of 60 basically is that symbol. Okay, So you could compare that to our symbols, except we had the advantage of 0. So we can differentiate between 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1st, 10 to the 2nd. For them, it was all just that one symbol. Okay, they just had that one. All right, so like I said, that caused a problem. It was confusing. I mean, come on. Can you imagine Babylonian dating? The lady would be like, how many girlfriends have you had? And the guy would be like, uh, I don't know, this many? <laughs> Did he mean one or 60? I mean, come on. Okay. So what if we didn't have zero, then one, and ten, and a hundred, and a million? They would all look the same. Fortunately, they don't. Why is that? That's because of zero. You can see it blinking. That guy's really happy about it. All right. So the zero product property. Product tells us we need to multiply. So if we take one thing, multiply it by another thing, and that gives us zero, then we know that one of those things must have been zero. All right. But let's replace the word thing with that guy and another thing with that guy. If we multiply those two guys and we get zero, then one of them must be zero, must equal zero. All right. So you have to try and guess which one it is. All right. Which one do you think it is? Should I go with red or blue? What do you think, Mr. Hosking? Uh, I think the red one. Red one? Ooh, he was right. All right. Just for kicks and grins, we're going to reveal the green one, too. If you guess green, you guess five. It's five. What is that? Five billion. That's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of zeros, Mr. Hosking. You were way off if you said that. All right. Thanks for the toys, Mr. Crable. I finally put them in a video for you. All right, example problem. What is the value of x in the equation x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 10 equals 0? Think about that. Otherwise, oh wait, this is the example. x plus 5 equals 0. If you subtract 5 from both sides, that means x equals negative 5. Or there's another situation. Maybe that thing is 0. x minus 10 equals 0. Think about it in your head. Add 10 to both sides. x could equal 10. So we would just say x equals negative 5 or x equals 10. All right. There's another way you might see it, and that is x equals negative 5 comma 10. That just says the same thing as above, the or. Both are okay. All right. This is problem one. This is for real. What is the value of x in the equation? Quantity x plus 7 times 
quantity x plus 7 equals 0. Think about that. Here's the spoiler. All right. Well, the first thing, x plus 7, could be equal to 0. If you solve for x, you get negative 7. But there's another situation. x plus 7 could equal 0. Hopefully you notice, though, that is actually the same thing. So there's no or about it. There's only one possible answer. x is negative 7. Problem 2. What must be true about the solution of the equation 4x times quantity x plus 6 equals 0? Give you a second. Okay, spoiler. Well, it's possible. The first thing, 4x equals 0. If you solve for x, divide 4 on both sides, you figure out x could equal 0. Or x plus 6, the other thing, might equal 0. If you solve for x, you see that x equals negative 6. So it turns out x could be either one of those, 0 or negative 6. And we say that both of them are solutions. So the correct answer is C. All right, now that is why zero is my hero. And I'm going to play just a short clip from my hero, Zero, a video from the old show, Schoolhouse Rock. Here it is. Zero? Yeah. Zero is a wonderful thing. Without you, Zero, my hero, how wonderful. What's so wonderful about a zero? It's nothing, isn't it? Sure, it represents nothing alone. Put place a zero after one, and you've got yourself a ten. See how important that is. When you run out of digits, you can start all over again. Place three zeros after any number, and you've multiplied that number by one thousand, etc., etc., ad infinitum, ad astra, forever. Wow, that was awesome. It was weird, but it was awesome.